I'm fighting for less prison time, and I need the judge's approval. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Raphael, and I'm here to review episode 14 and the finale of The Real Housewives Heading to Prison of Salt Lake City. So we start the finale off with Heather looking at the place that she's having her party at for her book cover, for her book reveal, for her book, Bad Mormon. The place she chose, it's nice and spacious, and she also lets us know, oh, if a fight does break out at my party, I hope it at least happens in front of my book reveal. And I mean, can you imagine if Jen, she comes on over, she gets into it with somebody? Next thing you know, Jen, she's picking up that giant book cover and whacking somebody with it. I don't think you want that type of advertisement towards your book, Heather. But then again, maybe you do. <laughs> so then we head over to Lisa's house. She's warming up her throat not like that but she's warming up her throat because she's gonna be singing in the choir i believe later on so she's telling john john i'm like you know warming up my throat like i'm so excited to be singing i can't wait wait can you hear me john stop you can't hear me stop it you really can't <laughs> and i'm like okay obviously lisa she lisa was in a very giggly mood this entire episode so then we head over to meredith's house she's getting ready for the party with her husband zeph zeph he was just like so i mean the what the, we have to dress up like cocktail attire like what what is this and what is this book like what is going on meredith she goes on to explain well, I mean, the book, the book that Heather's gonna have this book cover reveal, you know, I'm very excited to be supporting her book. I believe that it's called Bad Mormon, and, you know, I'm just very excited to be promoting her book, you know, out there. I'm glad that Heather's actually doing something with herself. So, Zev, he was just like, um, Bad Mormon? Hmm, I mean, you know, it seems like an idea, it seems like a book that maybe I'll buy last minute at the airport. <laughs> Or not buy at all. I don't blame you, Zeph. So then we head over to Whitney's house. She's also getting ready. She's putting on her little makeup in front of the mirror in front of her husband. And she was just like, um, um, so, um, honey, um, I, I'm going to support Heather at her, um, book launch. Well, no, it's not a book launch. It's like a book cover reveal. And I hope her book has pictures. I'm really excited. I hope it's like a coloring book. I love coloring a lot. But if it, if it has a lot of big words, I'm going to have difficulty with it because I, I'm not, I'm not sure if I could read a lot yet but I'm very excited to be supporting and I'm not gonna be in the choir I think because I wasn't good enough to be singing in her choir and I'm like okay so fine, whatever so then we finally get this party on the go and I'm like wow like you know this finale is just going straight in <laughs> so Heather she's getting there she looks nice in her black dress everything looks good you know all the guests are arriving one by one she's greeting all of them I believe <sighs> Angie K L M N O P. she's the first one to show up she looks nice and she shows up and Heather was just like, oh, you know, we're going to have a good time. You know, everything's going to be good. We're all going to get along. Yeah, right. Angie K, she was just like, um, yeah, I, we're going to have a good time. But um, I, I, I still feel like I have some things to get off my chest. And I'm like, Angie K, it, it is way too late. It is the finale at this point. You're not going to get a snowflake. <laughs> So then Lisa, Lisa comes on over. Lisa was just like, Angie, Angie, how are you? Hi, Angie, Sean. How are you, Sean? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Angie, you look so pretty. You look so nice. She heads over to look at Heather. She was just like, Heather, oh my God, your black eye. It's actually doing well. It's not swell anymore. It's not so big. Wow, I love it. It's so chic. What's going on? Heather, she was just like, you know, I really want this whole black eye situation to be put in the past. And I'm like... No, you don't. <laughs> you were using you were using it as a marketing strategy to get this book going, to get this book sale, and now all of a sudden you want to put it in the past. Cut it out, Heather. Like Heather, you know you really you really damage your whole entire brand on this show simply by this whole black guy situation and prolonging it. We're at the finale, at the reunion. I'm pretty sure we're still not gonna know anything about it. So Lisa, she was just like in her in her confessional. She was just like, I don't get why Heather. She's like prolonging this any longer. I mean, if you wanna you know put it in the past, just say what happened and let's move on from it. And that's that. And I'm like, yeah, Lisa, it's literally that simple. You know, at least somebody has some type of common sense on this show. So eventually, I believe Angie H. She showed up and I'm like oh Angie H this is like your third episode this entire season like you know very unfortunate but we'll get to that later so then she shows up Dana Dana she shows up as well Dana she had a really nice velour brown uh, dress I like what she was wearing and then I believe Heather she goes over to greet her cousins then we're left with Angie K Dana and Lisa Angie K she goes on to say um well you know today is uh the Greek Easter so uh, at midnight, I, I'm really putting things into perspective. And I, I really want to talk to Jen about these accusations that I'm hearing about me. She said that 
I'm the one that gave Heather the black eye and I'm not okay with that. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, you know, let's just get through this, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not gonna have to see them after the reunion, but Angie K, she continues on to say that Jen is accusing her of giving her, of, of her giving Heather the black eye. And I'm like, where, where did that come from? Jen, apparently she was spreading that around at the, at Brooks fashion show party charity thing or whatever that we we watched last week. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know, Jen, why would you do that? I mean, it obviously didn't happen unless you're trying to, you know, put the heat from you onto somebody else. Maybe that's what she's doing. But Angie K, she continues on. And, you know, at first I'm like, okay, I get it. I understand, you know, you want to clear up your name or whatever. She goes on to say, oh, I want to clear up my good name. And I'm like, we don't know you, but what, what name do you have? <laughs> You share a name with somebody else on the show, Angie H. So whatever. So then she goes on to say, um, yeah, I, I don't really get why Jen would do that ab about me. Like, I would never give anybody a black eye. But I did hear about her and Heather possibly, you know, Barbie scissoring. <laughs> I heard that they possibly did that. And maybe that's why Jen gave Heather the black eye by mistake when they were um, Barbie scissoring. So Lisa was just like, um, wait, wait, hold on. Barbie scissoring? What, what is that? Like, what's going on? Like, what's a Barbie scissoring? Whitney, she was just like, um, I, I love Barbies. <laughs> So then Angie K, she goes on to explain, oh yeah, supposedly Heather and Jen, they have, ugh, they have this lesbian relationship all of a sudden. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like, why are you trying to throw a curveball in this whole situation? Like, come on now. So she was just like, yeah, supposedly they were, you know, scissoring or whatever with their legs and everything. And somehow Jen's leg might have hit Heather in the eye. And I'm like, oh my goodness, NGK, you are really grasping at straws. Lisa in the confessional, she was just like, um, I don't get it. Like what exactly is Barbie scissoring? I mean, I can't really even picture Jen or Heather really doing that. <laughs> And I just thought it was just so lame. It was just so lame. And she really made it seem like it was just a, such a crazy thing. Like, oh, yeah, they're lesbian lovers. I mean, yeah, they were scissoring. And I'm like, okay, like, it's not the, it's not going to be the first time we hear something like this on the show or in life, uh, NGK. Like, come on now. Like, NGK, come, NGK, come, come over here. Get the fuck off the show. <laughs> now. <laughs> Meredith shows up next, so she joins the group, followed by Jen and her husband, Coach Shaw. They walked in like they were Bonnie and Clyde. They were ready to fight, too, because they walked up on Angie H and her husband, Chris, and they were just like, um, come on, let's go. Um, no, we need to talk. No, we need to have a private conversation. Come on, let's go. Let's, uh, I want to meet you in the back alley. <laughs> If I was Angie H, I would have had my stiletto in my hand, ready for Jen. Like, oh, you're not walking up on me like this. <laughs> but regardless, they split away from the group, so all four of them are talking. Coach Shaw, he starts off by saying, well, you know, Chris... You know, I just really want to have an honest conversation, you know, a deep dialogue and everything. I just want to, I want to mend fences. And Chris, you know, her, uh, Angie H's husband, he looks like a creep. He was just like, you know, um, you know, I, I really want to talk about what I did. And, um, you know, I noticed that people, when they cannot take accountability for anything, they start crying as soon as like, oh, I have to admit that I'm wrong. Oh, let me just break out in tears and everything is just going to be over. And that's exactly what he did. He was just like... You know, my, the Instagram is just, you know, I, I, <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 absolutely not. But you know, whatever, Coach Shy and Jen, of course, they're just gonna, you know, sweep it under the rug and they're like, okay, fine, we forgive you. It's whatever. Just don't do it again. And that's that. And I was thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, shouldn't he really be apologizing to Lisa and John, her husband, like for, for the things that he was saying on that Instagram account that he made, he was trashing her. Yeah, he may have used Jen Shaw's name, but he was typically trashing Lisa, wasn't he? So where's the apology for her? But that's that. They squash everything, they hug, and we move on to the next thing. So then we get the choir, right? We get the choir, everybody's, you know, in these black robes. It kind of look, it kind of look like a cult. <laughs> I'm watching this. I'm like, I'm a little uncomfortable, but they're up there. I believe we have Jen, Angie H, and Lisa. She's on the very far end. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa swore that this whole thing was about her. <laughs> She was so proud singing. Like she was, she swore that she was like a preschooler at graduation. But Heather, she starts off the singing and, you know, the singing, the, the singing, the singing was singing. You know, I, I, I like the beat. <laughs> I'm not sure if any of you have seen that viral video of Beyonce recently in Destiny's Child from years ago of her singing. I would have done that if I was in the choir. If you know what, what video I'm talking about, then you know what I'm about to do. I would have been on that choir on the stand like, Say Beyonce, 
Say Beyonce, say Beyonce. <laughs> If you know, you know. But eventually the choir, you know, they sound off. Eventually I have to take off my earmuffs and we move on to the next thing. Heather, she's about to do the big reveal. She started explaining how this whole book idea came to her in a passage. I believe it was 315, 316, 345, whatever, 4 o'clock. But she went on to say that she found it in a passage and that gave her the insight to write this book. And I'm like, Heather, the only passage that I know personally, you know, in the Bible that says 315 is the one that says, thou shalt tell us what happened to thou black eye. That's the one I really want to know. <laughs> I don't want to hear your explanation for this book, but I am curious. Like, she is talking bad about the Mormon church in her book, right? Like, that's exactly what the book is about. I'm not understanding if that's the explanation or not. But the cover, the cover looks nice, though, Heather. I must give you that because she's holding the Mormon uh, Bible or some type of Bible in her hand. And she was just like... <laughs> I'm like, ooh, this looks like a poster for Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> she was just like, oh, you want me to tell you about what happened to my black eye? Well, guess what? <laughs> She's not going to. So Lisa in the confessional, she goes on to say, um, I'm not really understanding what's going on with this book. Like, okay, you're selling a book and this book cover, but what's exactly inside the book? And I'm like, yeah, Lisa, I, I want to know that too. I mean, it's a memoir on her life. And I mean, I'm pretty sure it's pretty interesting, but I do wonder... You know, with her saying in her Instagram comments saying, oh, you know, you're going to have to find that in my book if the whole black eye situation is in the book. I mean, I feel like if Heather was to include what happened to her black eye in the book, I feel like it'll be at the very, very, very end of the book. <laughs> Like, it could be like a 300-page book, and I bet you, like, it'll be on the 299th page of the entire book. Like, oh, what happened to my black eye? Well, let me tell you. I walked into a door, and that's it, and the book is over. Like, I, 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 I can already picture it. <laughs> So Whitney pulls Jen to the side. And by the way, Jen looks really nice in her outfit. So Whitney, she starts off by telling her, um, Jen, I just don't understand why you flipped on me. I felt like you were kind of like a flip-flop. And I love flip-flops too because I have my own flip-flops at home. I have them in three different colors. I love flip-flops. But I don't like that you specifically were a flip-flop to me. I feel like, you know, all of a sudden you became friends with Heather and Meredith. And now all of a sudden I'm the bad guy. And I'm not the bad guy i'm the good guy i watched a lot of superhero movies and i'm a superhero too i'm supergirl i love wonder woman i just don't like this jen so jen she was just like um i didn't really flip on you per se or anything like that it's just you know we kind of bumped heads it is what it is that whole situation between jen and whitney it honestly was just kind of like a, a misunderstanding and jen being upset with whitney for no reason all whitney did was you know ask you oh what did you talk about with heather and meredith or yeah heather and meredith when you guys were in uh, San Diego that was it and then you just you know you blew it out of proportion so Whitney wasn't technically in the wrong in that situation meanwhile we see Angie K she's over there she's just plotting and she was just like okay I know that this is gonna be the finale I need to sneak my way over there what's going on Dana come on so then Dana she was just like come on let's let's go confront Jen I'll, I'm going with you and I'm like what are you two about to do jump her or something so Dana uh, Angie K she's right next to Whitney and, and Jen as they're talking just so awkwardly and eager to jump into it Jen she's making her plea against Whitney and everything she's looking over at Angie K like yes <laughs> I would have been like, uh, can I help you with something? Mind your damn business. So Angie K, she was just like, um, Jen, uh, I just want to talk to you about something right um, now about these accusations. Like me and you need to talk right now. Oh, okay, like we need to talk as soon as possible. Jen, she was just like, um, I'm talking to Whitney right now. So can you please just back up? And then Angie K, ooh, she was so rude. She was just like, um, okay, um, can we wrap this up? Wrap up the conversation with Whitney. Ooh. Jen, Jen, if I was you, I would have just swung. I mean, you're already going to jail. You might as well. <laughs> like, yeah, you'll get another jail, another year to your sentence. But so what? It'll be worth it because Angie K was just, oh, she was, she should have gotten dragged, especially for what she said to you like two seconds later. So then everybody started cir circling them as if this was some type of high school fight because all of a sudden, Meredith, she came out of nowhere. Lisa came out of nowhere. Coach Shah, he's over there standing by. Uh, you know, the producers are over there. Andy Cohen, he was there too. Everybody was there. And then Dana, she's just, you know, she's ready to pounce. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? What's happening? So then eventually the conversation turns over from An from Whitney and Jen to Angie K and Jen. So then Angie K, she starts off by saying, um, I, I really don't like these accusations that I'm hearing about me. And you are saying that I supposedly, you know, gave Heather the black eye. I would never 
do that? Why would you put those rumors out there to begin with? And Jen, I, Jen, honestly, I really, the more Angie K is talking, the more I actually kind of believe Jen. I, it may be foolish in the end, but I kind of believe Jen in this aspect because Jen is just looking at her like, what are you talking about? And it seems like she's very sincere about it. Like, what are you talking about? I would never do that. And GK, I feel like she kind of put those rumors out there by herself because she probably thought, okay, I need to prolong this fight with Jen. Just a really desperate attempt. So then Lisa, Lisa, she managed to get her quick, you know, her quickies in. She was just like, um, yeah, Jen, I, you know, I kind of felt like the same way. I kind of felt betrayed like Whitney and NGK. <laughs> I'm like, Lisa, be quiet. This is not about you. <laughs> So the next thing you know, so this is where Angie K, she just, she's been lost me, right? She's never won me over. But she was just like, um, Jen, I just, I really don't understand. Like, you know, when you said that me and Dana right here, you know, that we pushed you to the edge of you wanting to off yourself. Like, is that even real? Like, did you even do that? Like, is that whole situation real? So Jen cannot believe what Angie K is accusing her of. Coach Shaw, who's standing right next to Jen, he can't believe it either. He was just like, whoa, 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 what's, what's going on here? What's going on? We're not about to do that. Heather, out of nowhere, she comes out of nowhere. She was just like, ah, oh, no, Angie K, stop it, stop it, stop it. I kind of like that they all rallied behind Jen. I was waiting for Meredith to jump in too. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. What we're not about to do is accuse Jen of lying. <laughs> But, you know, she was just there in the background. But Angie K, that was just such a nasty dig at Jen. Like, you, for you to really accuse her of that, you could accuse her of being a criminal, of stealing money, of stealing people's credit cards. But still, accusing her of this, like, that's nothing to play around with. And it's really not cute. So then uh, Jen, she storms off. She was upset, you know, instead of, you know, doing anything to her or whatever. Or cursing her out right then and there, which would have been valid. She just walked away. She told Coach Shaw, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. So her and Coach Shaw, they walked away. That was that. Meredith, she followed her out the exit. And that was that. And Angie K, she was just left there looking stupid. And Dana, Dana was just there. Now let's talk about the moment that they cut out from the entire trailer. I'm pretty sure by now everybody knows that that moment between Dana versus Jen where Dana was just like, Oh, if I were you, I'd be a little bit more nice to me if you want some money on your motherfucking books. You know, when she goes to jail or whatever. You know that whole moment in the trailer? That's the moment that I was waiting for this whole entire episode. And they cut it out completely. And I just don't get why. Like, producers, Andy, Bravo, like, do you purposely want to sabotage Salt Lake City? Like, do you want it to go up in flames? Like, I just don't understand why they did that. We were all waiting for that. I mean, it would have been her one and only moment. <laughs> But we still wanted to see it. Like, it was a good line. It was very interesting. And I wanted to see what Jen was going to reply to that. But that was it. So, obviously, Dana is not going to come back. I think that this is... I believe, yeah, this is the last time that we see Angie K, Dana, and Angie H. This episode until the reunion, I guess. But I don't want to see all three of them back. Like, all three of them were completely pointless this season and useless. If Angie K is Jen's replacement for next season, if they have a next season, this whole show could just kiss itself goodbye. And it's not going to be a thing like season five, season six and so on because angie k like she's too she's a try hard she's desperate and she's just desperate <laughs> dana she was just in the background we didn't really get to know her angie h angie h at first this this season i saw potential in her but then it's just like uh, it's just it's a, she doesn't really give me that oof. <laughs> so all three of them they could get the axe and you know keep it moving and that was that but and you know at the finale of every real housewife show you get a little description of what each housewife has been up to ever since they wrapped up filming then we started getting that and i'm like wait a minute is the episode over like it's only been like 10 minutes <laughs> We haven't really seen much besides a couple of people singing really terribly and a book cover reveal, and that was it. So the episode was just over, but no, apparently it wasn't because they just cut it right in the middle of the episode because then we're about to get into what happens next. So then we see the ending intro for, I believe, Heather. Heather, she's worried that, you know, once her book comes out that her family is going to read it and who knows what that's going to be like. The backlash is going to be probably severe. And, you know, if I was Heather, I wouldn't care because, I mean, we saw last season that her family, I mean, her family really doesn't want to talk to her. So, I mean, who cares? You know, at this point, it is what it is. As long as you get your money from your book, it is what it is. So, Lisa, we see her. Lisa says that she's been doing good with her Vita Tequila. She's been looking at colleges with her son, Jack. So, obviously, he wants to go to school, I suppose. And at the very end, they said, oh, yeah. And she's she hasn't been to any jazz court, uh, any jazz basketball games. <laughs> So obviously she hasn't been sucking any dick. So then for Meredith, we see Meredith. Meredith, we got a little shady one. It was just like, oh, Meredith, Meredith is still doing good with the mental health charities and everything. And she's still a, a speaker for that. But her and Zeph, they have been too busy being in bubble baths to connect with Lisa again. <laughs> 
So that whole party was supposed to be the finale of season three, but because of Jen's trial, it kept getting pushed back further and further and further. Three months later, they had to pick up filming to find out if she was going to be found guilty or innocent. And production, you really, really, really messed up. Like this is all production's fault that we got this season the way that we got. Because this scene right here between Meredith and Jen and uh, and Heather in New York and trying to figure out like what's, gonna, what's about to happen to Jen, that should have been the very first episode of season three. And then the rest of the season should have been like the backlash or like you know what happens after Jen pleads guilty we should have gotten a whole entire season of them trying to figure out like Jen why did you lie to us what happened what's going on why did you do this but instead we got Angie K Angie H and then the other one <laughs> Like they really, really, they really dropped the ball and it's just so disappointing because from here to the very end of this finale, it, it was interesting. It was interesting. I was just like, okay, what's about to happen? Even though we already know she pleads guilty and she's about to go to jail. But you know, it was exciting. And I'm like, uh, production, you know, I know that they were betting on Jen's trial back in May of this, of 2022 or back in April, you know, and then that's why they rushed production and filming. And right after the reunion of season two, they rushed right into season three. And look what happened because you did that. You should have kind of just waited it out you should have been like oh let's see let's test the waters to see what's about to happen and then start filming at the right time but of course you wanted the footage and look what happened because of her trial getting pushed back further and further and further this is what we got but you know so but before that we see jen she's going to meet up with her mother right before she goes to new york for her uh for her sentencing or for her trial and this whole scene was just so so sad from the mom's perspective because the mom she's like in tears she's about to cry for her daughter and everything she's telling jen jen you know i'm, I'm gonna be here with you you know we're gonna get through this together and everything like you're you're innocent in all this you're innocent right jen she's looking at her mom like um mm-hmm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's just keep praying, Mom. <laughs> Like, it was just so, so, so sad. Like, Jen, how can you, how can you sit there and just lie to your mother? Like, your own mom, the, your mom who gave you her retirement money last season. Like, what, what, what was it? Like, close to a million dollars? She gave you all of that for your lawyer fees. And look, you're still lying to her. Like, you at least tell her behind the scenes. Like, hey, mom, I'm guilty and all of this. I'm about to plead guilty. So, you know, just get it out now. But no, you continue making a fool out of her on camera. And then the mom, she was just like, you know, you have to call upon your ancestors you know because you're in a very tough situation so as soon as you pray and you call your ancestors i'm pretty sure that they're gonna figure out that you're innocent in all this and i'm like oh. the ancestors are probably looking at jen like now why am i in this <laughs> don't bring me into her mess like leave me out of it like and jen again she just stayed quiet the entire time and just so so sad i just really 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 wonder what was going on in jen's mind the entire time like did she really think that she was gonna get off like you know innocent in this whole thing like did she really think that she was gonna go underneath the radar that's what i want to know i really want to know what was in her head supposedly right now before I started reviewing, I saw that she had posted on her Instagram, you know, after she, you know, pled guilty and everything, she's going to jail for like 6.5 years, right? We all know. So on her Instagram just now, on her story, on her Instagram story, she posted a selfie of her getting all glammed up, her hair. She looks really nice. I think she has a bathrobe on. And I think that she, the caption was just like, oh, I'm ready or something like that. And I'm like, wow, she is so bold. And I think that the rumor is that supposedly she's going to get a sit down one-on-one -on -one interview with Andy since she wasn't at the reunion obviously so i think that he's gonna interview her but i wonder what she, i really wonder what she has to say in all this but that was that so then coach shot he pulls up in the truck jen she says goodbye to her mom that's that so they're off to new york heather and meredith also pop up in new york and they have their own hotel room and i'm like oh wow you know can we have them as the new cast as the real house as a new york <laughs> It was so interesting to see them in a new setting because, you know, obviously for the last two seasons, they couldn't really go anywhere because of Jen. So it's nice to see them on the East Coast for once. So they're there. Uh, Heather, she's telling Meredith, so Meredith, what's our game plan? What are we going to do? How are we going to, you know, bust her out of jail if she is guilty? So Meredith, she was just like, I mean, I don't really know right now. I mean, I think that the best that we can do right now is just to be here with Jen. And I think that she appreciates that we're here at least in New York City, my favorite city in the world. 
world, you know, supporting Jennifer Shaw. You know what I mean? Who knows if she's going to be guilty or not? And I wonder, where was Lisa in all of this? I would have loved to see Lisa in this whole environment, like, to see, like, what's going to happen, like, what was going on through her head as well. Meredith and Heather go to visit Jen at her hotel room to see what she's up to, where she's at mentally. Jen, she's happy to see them. They're all hugging. Coach Shaw, he's also there. They're sitting down. Jen, she doesn't really know what to feel and everything. And then we see in the flashback that Jen and Heather, they actually met up at her house, I believe. And Jen, she was crying to Heather and she was just like, you know, God forbid, if anything happened to me, allegedly, if, I if I'm found guilty, allegedly, of these allegedly crimes that I allegedly did not do, if something happens to me, I'm just going to be so torn and I just don't know what I'm going to do without my kids, you know? And, you know, it's just... Like I've been saying, as much as you want to feel for Jen, even just a little bit, at the end of the day, Jen, like, you did, you ripped apart a bunch of families' lives, financially-wise, and, you know, you didn't care about it then. You didn't care about, you didn't care about anybody's feelings but your own pockets and your own feelings. So it's just like, now we're supposed to be caring about yours just because you feel bad, just because you're about to be caught? Like, but I do feel for her children. As for Coach Shaw... I feel for him just a little bit, but at the same time, I don't know because he's a lawyer and you mean to tell me that you have no idea what Jen was doing? Like, yeah, he has his own money, but did you ever question Jen, your wife, where her money was coming from? I mean, she did try to explain what she did financially, I believe at the reunion last season and from season one all the way to now, she was trying to explain what she does financially, but I mean, we never really got a clear answer. It was always her walking around in circles and you, her own husband, that you see her every single day. You lay with her in bed. You have pillow talk. You mean to tell me that she never slipped up and accidentally told you like, um, hey, babe, so um, I just scammed another elderly person. Like, she never told you that. So I don't know. Coach Shaw, I just feel like he's not 100% innocent. But at the same time, I don't think that he's 100% or 50% guilty either. He must have known something. But he was probably hoping that it wasn't nothing. Maybe that's the case. But regardless, that's that. Then the next day in New York, we see Seth, Meredith's husband. He's there. He was supposed to go out with Coach Shaw to, to go out to eat and talk. But that didn't happen. So he's meeting up with Mer uh, Meredith and Heather at some park in New York. And again, I love New York City. I've said it before, New York City is my favorite city in the world. So they're sitting down and Zeph, Zeph, give him a snowflake for season four because he was asking all the right questions. As soon as he sat down, he was just like, so um, what's going on with Jen? You know, what's, what's happening with her? I mean, I know that there's a, a list of people or whatever that are coming out saying that they're guilty or whatever. What's going on? Heather, she's all, you know, emotional and everything. She doesn't really know what to think. Meredith, she's trying to explain it like, well, I mean, this is a little bit more serious than a little small accusation where you could just go to prison for six years. This is a very serious, very, very, very serious matter. And right now, Jen, she's facing a lot of time for her alleged crimes and we don't really know what's about to happen. And so then Zeph, he moves in closer and he was just like, so did any of you ever bother to question Jen to see if she was guilty? And I'm like, oh, Zeph, <laughs> where were you all season? <laughs> And, you know, I think that that's the other issue, too, that we had. This issue was similar on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills with Erica Jane and questioning her and everything. Sutton, she did her best. So did Garcelle. But with season two of Salt Lake City, they were doing well with trying to piece all the pieces together. You know, between Mary, Meredith, Lisa, and Whitney, and even Heather at some point, they were all trying to figure out, like, wait, what's going on with Heather, with uh, Jen? They weren't just ba ba bowing down to her and just was just like, oh, no, she's innocent, she's innocent. No, they had their questions. Season three, they slipped up and for some reason everybody on the cast was scared of Jen and they just took her word for it and that was it but I don't know at the same time I see what Heather is talking about because Heather was just like well I mean you know if you love your friends and you're as close as friends as we are then you know if, if they tell you that they're innocent in something then you just have to believe them and you have to honor honor your friendship and I get it and I understand it but you know from a I don't know because it's just like if one of my friends was in this position and I'm Heather oh wait a minute no if I'm Meredith <laughs> And my friend is Jen. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I will believe you. I'll be like, okay, fine. I'll believe you. But I won't believe you all the way. I'll have, I have a couple questions. And, you know, it's just not going to be like two or three questions. No, it's going to be a whole book. <laughs> so maybe, I mean, I might be a ride or die. But I'm not, maybe not the die part. I'm going to ride with you until, you know, I see the prison cell. <laughs> then I'm going to get off that bus. But Heather, she was just like, well, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, 
I'm going to ride it off till the wheels fall off and that's it. Meredith, on the other hand, Meredith, she was just like, well, I mean, I take this whole situation very seriously. And if Jennifer Shaw is found guilty in this whole matter, then that's a very, very, very big issue for me. And I'm going to have a very, very big problem. And I do wonder now that she's, you know, guilty and she's going to be going to jail the day after Valentine's Day, I believe. I wonder if either one, well, I know Heather's going to go visit her, but I wonder if Meredith is going to go visit her, Lisa, anybody. I'm pretty sure that they all feel was so stupid that Jen was just lying to their faces for like two years now or like a year and some change like what do they feel like so many unanswered questions <laughs> We then see Meredith and Heather meeting up with Jen at the hotel room one last time. So they're sitting down. Jen, she's about to break the news to them that her business partner and her partner in crime, Stuart, has pled guilty to all these crimes and has thrown her underneath the bus and he's taken her down with him. So she's upset about it. She was just like, Stuart is a piece of shit. How dare he? I paid for everything. I paid for his children's school. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did you pay for his children's school or did you use somebody else's money to pay for their school? Like, which one is it, Jen? Because it's not looking too pretty. So Jen... She She's pissed that he's, you know, going down in this ship and he's also taking her down with him. And, you know, they're like, wait, what's going on? Why, though? Why would he do that? Jen, she was just like, well, maybe, you know, they offer him a, a, a less a lesser sentencing in prison. Maybe that's it. And, you know, I watched all six seasons of How to Get Away with Murder to come to find out that that probably is true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they probably told Stuart, like, Stuart, if you don't, you know, give us some information or tell us that Jen is also involved in this whole thing with you, then you're also going to go, you're going to take her prison sentence and we're going to add it on to you. So you're probably going to be in jail for like 20 years or 20 plus years. But if you tell us that she was involved, maybe we'll give you like a discount or something. <laughs> And that's probably what he did. So now Jen, you know, that's that was her thing or whatever. I think that Jen was really counting on Stewart just going down in flames by himself and just, you know, taking the blame completely. Like she probably thought that, you know, he was he was um he was blindly loyal to her to that point where he was just like, well, okay, fine. I'll go to prison for you. I love you that much. And I, you know, I look up to you that much. Maybe that's what she thought because obviously she does that with Heather and Heather, she's blindly loyal to her as well. So I'm pretty sure that this is like a pattern in her friendships, but now she's pissed about it. Meredith and Heather, they barely said anything. <laughs> they don't know what to say. They're just looking at her like, okay, I mean, what do we do? Should we go out to the nightclub in New York? <laughs> I hope that they did something fun in New York, at least. Like, I hope that they weren't just there stressed over Jen the entire time. But that was that. And Jen, she's just a pissed about it. And I feel like this is where Jen's whole demeanor changed. Because, uh, like I said, I feel like she was really counting on Stuart just kind of taking the fall for this. And now her whole plan just fell apart in her face. And now she was just like, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm actually in trouble. And... Just, just a mess. So, and it was just really sad to see them all hugging each other, like all three of them hugging each other. And they're like, oh, the three amigas, the three amigas. And I'm like, oh, like Heather and Meredith, both of you are being lied to your faces right there by Jen. And that was that. So then we move over to July 11, 2022. Jen, she pled guilty. <laughs> She pled guilty and it was just crazy. And then I was reading these documents and uh, some of the tweets from the, the people that were inside the courtroom. And Jen, Jen has no shame. Jen, Jen is crazy. Jen is just like on a whole different planet. <laughs> because she went on to say, I believe, don't quote me on this. But she went on to say to tell the judge, oh yeah, I knew what I was doing was wrong. I knew, you know, what they were buying was wrong and it wasn't benefiting them. And I knew I was taking their money and I'm sorry. And then I believe she also went on to say, that she 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 took the wrong medication and stuff and she wasn't really there in the head so then once she took the right medication then she realized that her actions were wrong and again she was just grasping at straw she was just she was throwing everything at the wall to make sure that she didn't end up behind bars and like i said in my last review jen if you would have hired annalise keating i'm pretty sure that she would have at least gotten you like maybe house arrest <laughs> But no, you're now you're doing 6.5 years and people are saying that she should have gotten more. She should have gotten like 11 plus years because I, me personally, I actually thought she was going to get away with this and she was going to be let off free. And that's that. I feel like, yeah, they're probably not going to do anything to her. They're probably going to take down Stewart and just let her go with a warning or something, or at least maybe like a year or a couple of months. I was actually shocked when she got 6.5 and, you know, people are saying, oh, that's a little, that's a little, that's a little. It's a little, but you know, even six, 6, 6.5 years, that's a lot. That's a lot of time. Even a year is a lot to me. Even a week in prison will be too much. <laughs> So I don't know, 6.5 years and I believe that she's not going to be able to get off on good behavior, you know, because that's typically a thing. I think that she's going to have to do most of her time, like at least five years. So I don't know, that's going to, that's just crazy. Like, I wonder how her children feel in all of this, like... 
just a mess. So then we we head back over to Salt Lake City, right? We see Heather and Lisa. They're meeting up one last time and they're going to talk about what happened with, you know, Jen pleading guilty. They're both shocked, but of course, Lisa, even though this everything is just falling apart around them, she still made sure to order her Vita tequila. <laughs> She was just like, um, can I get two Vita tequilas? One for me and one for Heather. So Heather, what's going on with Jen? So then Heather, she was just like, you know, I'm really shocked that everything that just happened with Jen, like she really pled guilty. I just can't believe this. And then her whole entire conspiracy theory, she was just like, you know, she really did this. I just can't believe this. Lisa, she was just like, but like, why? Why do you think that she did this? Like, why did you plead? Like, why did she plead guilty? Why did she not continue fighting if she was innocent in all of this? Heather, she goes on to say some bullshit. And she was just like, um, you know, I just, I really feel like Coach Shaw was the mastermind behind everything. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Where did this come from? Like, like, I, like I've been saying, Heather is so blindly loyal to Jen that she's placing the blame on somebody else. I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, I agree with everything else that she was saying, but she kind of lost me with that because she went on to say, you know, I feel like, you know, all of this was coming out and all the witnesses and stuff, all the people that were pleading guilty, I feel like it was becoming too much. So he probably told Jen, Jen, if you just take the fault from me, you know, you go to prison, I'm going to take care of the kids and you just could, you know, do your time and everything. I think that they're going to have good food and prison but you go to prison and I stay home and that was that and I'm like Heather no 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 Heather no 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 I agree that coach Shaw he probably knew something and he probably read over the the documents and he was probably like Jen you have to plead guilty because this is not looking too good for you I'm pretty sure that that, that was the case and she probably did it she probably pled guilty because he probably told her like this isn't going to benefit you if you continue prolonging it and saying that you're innocent but to say that coach Shaw is the mastermind behind this whole scheme no, it was all Jen and Stuart and whoever else was involved. And that was that, Heather. So then Lisa, she makes it about herself and she starts crying. <laughs> she was just like, I just can't believe this, Heather. Like, I really can't believe this. Like, this is so unsurreal. Like, I need a Taco Bell Grande right now. Like, can I get another Rita Tequila to please? Like, extra, yeah, no, extra lemon. Give me two lemons, please. Heather, do you want anything? No, I'm paying. I'm paying. Okay, no, no, thank you. I just can't believe what's going on with Jen. <laughs> And that was that. And then Heather, she finally admitted. She was just like, she did it. She did it. She did it. And she's probably going to jail for 11 or 15 years. And she's really not. She's going for 6.5. And I wonder what's going to happen next. It's just crazy because I don't, I don't, in my time of watching The Real Housewives, I don't think that we've ever left off a season on a cliffhanger like this. Like, I it was just like, okay, what's going to happen next? Like, what's happening? <laughs> Because then we see the little preview to the reunion and the reunion, like any, it's barely anybody on stage. <laughs> they have this huge stage, this beautiful set, right? Like Salt Lake City is known for their beautiful sets on the, at the reunions. And then we have these two big ass couches and Andy's in the middle. The couches, they're all empty and everything. Meredith, she's over there. Heather, she's over there. Lisa, she's right here. Whitney, she's on the other side of the couch. Like the whole couch is empty. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure that that... Once we get to the reunion, we're probably going to hear their echoes. <laughs> Andy's probably going to be asking a question like, so, 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 so. It's probably that empty in that whole room. <laughs> and the preview, it doesn't even look like too interesting. Hopefully it's just like one part or maybe two parts at most because I don't think that there's no reason to drag this out any longer. Like, let's just put a pause on Salt Lake City, get it together for season four, and then come back stronger. Andy, I believe on his podcast, I heard a clip that he said, oh yeah, we're going to get, we have such good casting for season four. Hmm. Sure, Andy, I'll believe it when I see it, but that was Salt Lake City, y'all. Like, I can't believe this. Jen, I think this, this is probably the last episode that we'll ever see her on The Real Housewives until season 11. <laughs> So that is crazy to me. I mean, I don't know. We'll probably see the interview with her and Andy. That's that. But Salt Lake City, it is so scandalous. It has been scandalous from episode one, from season one all the way up to now. Like, that is crazy. And they're only on season three. Can you imagine how worse it's going to get <laughs> if they continue? But... Let me know what you all thought about this entire season. What you thought about Jen's sentencing. Where, did she, where should they move forward? Who should they cast? What should happen next? What should happen with the cast? Like, what's going to happen next? <laughs> Let me know your full opinion on this whole entire season. And thank you for everybody for sticking with me in this whole innocent trial with Jen Shaw this entire season. I appreciate your support and I appreciate you watching my reviews and my videos and your lovely comments. So bye everybody. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs>